first gap which I saw is uh, still in uh, different spatial data uh, policy and pricing policy within the European Union uh, member states. Uh, even here if in the strategical and uh, legislation level, we have uh, uh, all the framework uh, which allow us uh, to realize uh, this location interoperability, but practically uh, it is still uh, you could still uh, found this this type of, of uh, differences and uh, barrier a second um, gap is uh, from my opinion lacking of uh, no lacking of knowledge and capacities within uh, firstly european union member states public sector and also within our uh, other stakeholders uh, to achieving this uh, achieving this practical uh, interoperability the barriers that I have uh, come across has to do with a common understanding of things, of uh, of uh, starting with uh, concepts and terms, but also, of course, then uh, moving on to the technical uh, aspects. So I think it's it has to do with that it's too. I mean, looking at the pure, the traditional geospatial world, and, and then you look at the e-government. It is. I mean, it's to and any domain. I mean, it's it's different realities or different different um, different communities. So it, it has every aspect of of uh, barriers that you need to find ways to come across. There are there are several gaps. There are uh, policy gaps. There are knowledge gaps. Um, there are uh, priority gaps. Um, now, I, I think the knowledge gap is, is quite well handled, partly also through Elise, um, um, by, by <clears throat> making it more known what is possible and, and what is achievable. Um, and then the, the policy gap is something that needs to be um, tackled at, at each uh, policy level. Um, what do they want to achieve? What is their priority? And then how do they go about it? Um, and that's that's more difficult to tackle, um, especially because uh, quite a few of these um, policy initiatives are interrelated, exist next to each other, don't really depend on each other, but can be um, can be uh, slowed down by by one another. I think the the main barriers w uh, start at the local level. So as soon as a local government or agency can uh, collect data from the different players that it, are in, in its network, it's the first step that uh, uh, enables the rest. Because from there, the city will have its own uh, uh, overview, holistic vision of what's happening, and they can uh, uh, calculate KPIs, evaluate its performance, and then share data and their lessons learned, not only success stories, but share what, what happened wrong with other municipalities and other governments that want to uh, invest in similar solutions because they have the same goals or the same uh, agenda towards sustainability or towards uh, uh, in innovation and engaging uh, businesses and, and quality of, of life. So I, I think that it really starts at the local uh, level um, and it then grows, grows uh, towards the regions and then to member states uh, so that we can promote data shareability and true transparency. To my uh, to my understanding on, or maybe experience so far, I think that the biggest uh, missing element is the is the proper let's say uh, uh, and well skilled human resources because uh, I see this as a as a really important uh, aspect which. Uh, which is missing, especially on the side of the of the governmental uh, sector, where a lot of um, authorities are somehow um, managing a lot of information, or they are they are procuring a lot of uh, location location related information. But then, the, to achieve, uh, let's say, harmonized and interoperable exchange of such a data even uh, across the public sector or further on to the other domain uh, sectors like uh, private sector, uh, R&D or uh, general citizens, 
simply there is not enough well-skilled people. I think possibly one of the biggest gaps that we have at the moment is that of um, you know cross-community uh, glossary harmonization. Um, so you know we even though we are a geospatial community, including the Earth observation and. Um, you know, communities and the you know national mapping agencies, private companies, and universities. Um, we do have specific glossaries that we use to support uh, our work. Um, now, over uh, the years, we have you know there are some glossaries that have become uh, more widely used. I'll name the GMAT uh, glossary, for instance, which uh, or the GMAT Thesaurus, which is uh, published by the uh, European Commission. Uh, within the OGC, we have the OGC definition server, which uh, hosts uh, a number of uh, glossaries and, uh, and other control vocabularies. Um, and then there are others, for instance, at ISO, the International Organization for Standardization. Now, we've managed to develop these glossaries, but what we haven't um, fully achieved is a way to cross link between our different uh, glossaries. And um, that, in some instances, has created some challenges, um, particularly now as we're moving towards greater use of, uh, you know, machine learning and artificial intelligence.